Good day, doodlers, and welcome to Draw Cartoons. Today, I'm gonna teach you guys the magic of using what is called multiply layers in your artwork. Now, you might have heard of this before, and I'm gonna break it down for you guys in the simplest way that I can. Now, you don't need anything like a maths degree. You know, you don't need to be good at maths to understand multiply. I know the name kind of suggests something mathematical. Don't worry, it's got absolutely nothing to do with that. Now, this is a tutorial that is exclusive, exclusive to digital artwork. This has nothing to do with uh, working on a pencil and paper. You can't use Multiply with that, I'm afraid. Multiply is an entirely digital technology and it uses art applications just like Photoshop, uh, Clip Studio Paint, which is what I'm using right now, and also Procreate, and there's, there's a few other apps out there that use Multiply. But the long and short of it is, is, is essentially this, didn't mean to bring that back, is essentially this. It's a layer mode. So, what I've got here, I've drawn a character ahead of time, I've got two layers, that's all we have here. As you can see, I have a line work layer that I can hide and show freely here, so that's just the lines, and then underneath is just the colors. I chose um, just some basic colors here to show, purely for the sake of showing you guys how this works. Now, in between these layers, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new layer, right? So now all I've done is made a new layer between them. It's below the lines and it's above the flat colors. Now this, I'm gonna set this layer mode to multiply. So I'm gonna hit that, I'm gonna go all the way up to the top and multiply. This will be different depending on the application you're using. But the main thing is the same. All I'm doing is setting the blending mode, as it says there, to multiply. Um, and like I said, this works across software, Photoshop, Procreate, you name it. If it has that functionality, you can use it. Um, now the power of multiply, you're probably wondering, well, what does multiply do? Why am I even here? Multiply is very powerful for darkening images. That's what multiply does. Multiply cannot be used to brighten your colors, but it will always be used to darken colors. Now I'm gonna show you guys what I mean. So I've got my layer set to multiply. I've chosen black as a color. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw, I'm just gonna scribble on my character. And it's applying black, as you would expect from a normal layer. So you're thinking, well, that's, what difference does that make? All it's done is just, it's just painted a big black splodge on the character. Well, watch what happens when I instead use white. I'm gonna go up here to my color picker, I'm gonna choose white. And then, I'm gonna paint somewhere else. Let's paint on his leg. Nothing, nothing. Or at least we can't see anything. It is actually doing something. We are actually painting white onto the canvas. If I change the layer mode back to normal, you can see the white is actually there. But when I change it to multiply again, the black stays and the white goes. Now, why is that happening? Well, in multiply, the brighter the color, let me actually write this so it's a bit clearer. The brighter the color, the more hidden it is. So white is completely invisible when painted onto a multiply layer, but black is not hidden at all, right? So if I just delete what we did on the multiply layer and start all over again, what happens if I pick something and say in the middle? Look at this, we have like a, we call this a 50% gray, right? It's halfway between white and black. What happens if I use that instead? Ah, now it's not quite as deep a black as before. Before we had this really bold jet black, it couldn't get any darker than that. But now we've got something that looks a little bit like a shadow. Useful that, isn't it? So I can now, now that I'm using a not something that's not quite white, something that's not quite black. I'm using a 50% gray, and I can start using this to just loosely etch in shadows on my character here. So, you know, put, put a bit of shadow there, maybe where the arm folds, a bit of shadow there, some shadow underneath the pectoral muscles. Anywhere I want, you know, I, I've not really thought of a light source here, which is bad practice. You should always think about where your light's coming from. It's probably coming from up here or something like that. But this is what Multiply does. In essence, it kind of does your shadows for you. All you have to do is pick something that's not white and then paint onto your character. That's it. Just, just paint on the bits where you want the shadow. Um, now, 
Something that's really fun about this is that now that we know what Multiply shows and what it doesn't show, we can start to play around with what colors we use. And before I do that, Multiply is great because it doesn't matter what the color underneath is, it will adapt. So watch what happens. I'm, I'm shading the blue here and it's just making it a darker blue, right? Well, let, me, let me get a bit closer. So it's just making it a darker blue. What happens when I go onto the yellow? Well, it's adaptive. It's just making it a darker yellow now, right? So it's not just shading it one color. It's not just making it black. It's making it a darker version of the color underneath it. And that's where Multiply gets its name from. It multiplies the color that you're using on the Multiply layer with whatever is underneath it. And I mean everything, not just the one layer that's underneath it, but all the layers underneath it. So it's adaptive, it even works on the legs down here. So if I shade a bit of blue here, so it makes it a darker blue, and I go into the red and it's making it a darker red. And this is exactly why Multiply is so useful as a really quick and easy way to shade things digitally. Obviously, unfortunately, it doesn't really work like this in, in reality. You can use watercolors to kind of get something similar, um, but that's a lot harder and it's not something I really know how to do. I don't really experiment with traditional mediums very much. But yeah, this is, like I said, a very, very easy way of doing it. So like I said before, what happens then if we don't use gray? If we use, um, say, something here, I've added, as you can see, part of my phone, as you can see, I've added a bit of red here, right? So all I've done is I've moved from the gray over somewhere to the middle, right? right in between everything. It's not white, it's not black, it's not a bright red, it's not gray, it's right here in the middle. It's kind of a murky looking red. What happens if I shade with that? Let me show you. I'm gonna get close again. Right? Now that, that's a bit deep, isn't it? That's really, really dark. That's really dark. So if anything, to, to make a better example of this, I really wanna be choosing something that's a bit lighter, or I could do that, or I could actually lower the opacity of the layer I'm working on. So right now, my mul if you look down here, my multiply layer is 100% opaque, which means it doesn't let any, any light through at all. If I drop this opacity to, to say something around 50%, there we go. It's a lot more subtle a shadow and I can move this anywhere I want freely. I can keep working on it. I can keep adding shadows freely and I can keep moving this around to achieve the right kind of subtle subtlety of the shadows. Now, you might not be able to tell, but there is actually a little bit of red in this shadow. Red doesn't show up too well on a, uh, on a blue kind of backdrop here. Um, it may also be because the red I'm using is quite murky, but this is where the experimentation comes in. I'm gonna put a little bit, a bit of this on the yellow and you can see straight away, look at that. That's actually got a really, really nice kind of red shadow to it that looks very effective, very, th this is a very common choice that digital artists will make. They will choose red to shade yellows and they'll choose blues to shade blues. That's something I'll get to in a bit. But right now, as you can see, this is very effective on this yellow. And if I just show you, go, let's go back to roughly the dark gray I was using earlier. If I show you a comparison, if I paint over this, there we go, so that's a way more cooler shadow, isn't it? It looks almost cold, what I'm painting now. And that's what we were doing before. That's exactly the same, well, more or less, exactly the same gray we were using before. And all of a sudden, in comparison to the red we were using to shade, it looks so much colder. So this is something else that's great about Multiply. It kind of does all the work for you. You can choose, if I choose a blue here, I'm gonna choose a lighter blue because it'll show up just a little bit nicer. Um, if I choose a blue here, it's gonna produce a very cold looking shadow, very lifeless, very um, almost a zombified kind of icicle sort of blue. This, this is the kind of shadow you wanna use in very somber pictures, pictures that are depicting sadness or just quite frankly somewhere that's quite cold. Um, it's very effective for that, and blue does go well on blue as well, like blue multiplies well with itself. So as you can see here, it doesn't look quite as lifeless, it actually looks quite colorful and nice. Um, and that's just color interaction for you. Really, when it comes to shading something that is blue, you really want to be using a blue or even a purple underneath it, and I'll show you that too. If I go to purple, let's choose, yeah, roughly that'll be okay. Let's use that purple. So if I shade 
and now down here. So again, it looks really, really nice. Very effective kind of shadow here. You will see purple used a lot by digital artists um, in their shadows. Purple's one of those colors, magenta really, is one of those colors that kind of works on anything. It's very effective, apart from very, very dark surfaces. It's something that you can kind of get away with um, if you just want to make quick work of shading something. You can get away with using magenta to shade things on basically any color. Basically any color. And I'm using it right now, and it's very, very effective. Um, so there you go. And if I go back to using that gray again, it looks really cold again, doesn't it? But this is exactly the color we were using before. So that is why I want to, ex I want, I want to encourage you guys to experiment with colors and um, see what works for you and definitely mix them up. Like, you know, you want to use a red on the yellow or something just to give it like a nice, very impactful kind of shade. But remember on blues, you want to be sticking to blues maybe to get the most out of them. Because otherwise they're going to look really dull like that. That looks really dull. That's just like a gray underneath that. But I'm using a blue now and it pops really, really nicely. Now another thing about multiply is uh, because of its non-destructive nature, because you're working on a layer that the multiply is on by itself, nothing, nothing else is on this layer. So I can get an eraser out. I'm going to press E for an eraser here. So now, I, now I've got an eraser out. Looks the same, but when I start painting, trust me, it'll have a very different impact. I can start just getting rid of the bits that I don't want shadows on. So this is another really, really useful thing about using multiply is that you're on a, a separate layer and you can just, you know, if you've gone a bit overboard with your shading, you can just etch away the parts that you don't want. Here's something else that's great about that. I can actually shade my whole guy in, my whole guy in, okay? Now I've gone a bit over overboard here, so I'm just gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna use what's called clipping. I'll do a separate video on that in the future, but basically it binds everything to the layer underneath it. You don't need to know that for now. I'm just doing this as an example. So I've made my whole guy covered in this multiply, uh, multiply blue. So all I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get my eraser out, and now I can start rubbing away the bits where I do want the light to appear. And this is something else that a lot of digital artists will do. And they'll start from shadow, and then they'll paint in the light. And a lot of digital artists find it a lot easier to work like this, because when you really think about it, this is kind of how light works in a lot of situations anyway. It's the photons hitting your body. So a lot of people like to visualize it that way. Um, honestly, it's up to you. It depends on how light your um, your environment is. If you're working in a dark environment, you know, your, your character is in a dark environment, you might want to do it this way because it will make you be a bit more generous with shadows anyway. Um, but if they're in a light environment, you know, it's like a bright sunny day or something, you might want to do it the other way around where you start without any colors down and then you just kind of paint down where you want the shade. But doing it this way makes you, you know, it makes you a bit more sparing with your light and makes you more thoughtful about where it goes. Um, I'm just kind of throwing things down now wherever I kind of feel wherever I kind of feel it goes, but this is up to you to experiment with. This is another great option about Multiply, is that you can experiment so freely and you can use whatever color you want um, to, to shade and light your character any way you like. And it doesn't matter what they look like underneath, you know. I'm going to erase this now and it will restore that nice bright red. It doesn't matter what the color is underneath to an extent. Again, if you're, if you're using dark colors, it gets a... It takes a lot of practice to really master that, but this character's got some fairly bright character, uh, bright colors on them, and this will work for most of your drawings. So there's a quick kind of crash course in Multiply. One last thing I want to show you guys is that you can, I'm, I'm using a hard edge brush, brush, as you can see. You can choose a softer brush. So this brush now that I'm using is a very, very soft edge. And what I can do is I can just kind of erase away the edge and we get a more natural looking shadow here. Look at that. So you want a hard edge maybe where there's hard creases in the body, such as like here. But in the parts where there's a lot of a lot of roundedness to it, like the arm, you might want to kind of blend it like that, you know? But uh, I think blending is probably, that deserves its own tutorial. This tutorial is just here to show you guys how incredibly magical um, multiply layers are. It's something that I use every day. I think it's a very powerful digital tool and it's something that you can very much benefit from with digital artwork and not so much from uh, traditional artwork because it just doesn't really exist that way. Um, it's one of those nice auto-tune benefits of digital art really. 
But there you go. I hope that was useful, guys. I would love, by the way, if you haven't already signed up to the Draw Cartoons Discord, I would love to see you guys kind of play with that idea. Show me what you've got. If you've got the software, and I know not everyone can get it, I appreciate that. But if you do have access to um, Clip Studio Paint or even GIMP, I think GIMP has it and it's free. I haven't used GIMP in a long time, but GIMP is free and I think it may have a multiply option. So you may, may want to experiment with that if you have access to a computer. Um, if you don't, then continue to work uh, in a way that suits you, if it's digital and all that stuff, or if it's traditional, doesn't really matter. Um, we're all about learning to draw in our own way here, so if you don't have access to that software, don't worry. But this, this is great. If you do have access to digital software and a graphics tablet, stuff like that, this is a very, very powerful tool. And I'd love to see what you guys can come up with playing around with a multiply layer modes here. Changing the opacity as well, like I like the opacity I have there, but look, that shadow is so strong now. All I did was move it up to 64, you know, up to, okay, up to 100, it looks a bit silly now. But you know, you can make it really subtle at like 26%. So yeah, I would love to see what you guys can come up with. And um, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. If you did like this tutorial, guys, please consider uh, clicking like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos just like this one in the future and leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of tutorials I should cover next. With that, I'll see you guys next time.